There are many important characters in The Witcher that are only present in the books and maybe slightly referenced in the games. And what I mean by important characters are actual main characters that have either a recurring and or significant role throughout the various plot points we experience in the books. Many of you may not know this, but for, I'd argue, the majority of Geralt's main story in the Witcher books, he was joined by five friends, and although today's entry is not about these five friends as a group, it is about one of them. This character actually played a fairly pivotal role in the development of the other main focal character of the Witcher books, Ciri. So, today's Witcher lore entry is on Cahir Mordefrin Ep Kjallak, or the Nilfgaardian. To begin, I think it's worth noting that Kahir is technically not an Nilfgaardian. He is from Vikovaro, which to most Nordlings would label him as a Nilfgaardian, but as he explains, for those in the Nilfgaardian Empire, the term Nilfgaardian is only afforded to those who were born in the capital of the Empire, Nilfgaard. The origins of Kahir prior to his actual appearance in the books are fairly... I suppose normal, at least compared to many in The Witcher. As for a large amount of his life, he was simply a Nilfgaardian, or Vigavarian, noble son, who eventually went on to be sort of caught up in this greater adventure. He would have lived with his family in Vikavaro, with his father Kjallak, his mother Mor, his two brothers Eilil and Dethran, and three currently unknown sisters. We also know the name of his grandfather, who may have lived with him, Grufed, and that his great aunt was the famous sorceress Asira Va'anahid, sister of Kahir's grandmother Aviva. The name of this family home in Vikavaro was Dan Defla, and his noble house is known as the Defrin House. In fact, you may have already picked up on this, but his full name consists of his name, Kahir, his mother's name, Mor, his house name, Defrin, and his father's name, Kjallak. The ep in his name basically means of, so his name sort of means Kahir of Kjallak. Sort of like Kahir, son of Kjallak. His origins past this are effectively that at some point he joined the Nilfgaardian military intelligence and eventually became an officer. He was also made a count. This brings me to his story in the books, and in today's lore entry, I will try my best to give you all a fairly concise summary of what the first part of his story was in the books. But as he appears in all of the main books in one way or another, so from Blood of Elves to the Lady of the Lake, and has a fairly substantial part in the majority of them, I will of course have to condense a lot of his story down. But having said that, let's get into the first part of Kahir's story. Kahir's story in the Witcher books begins with his assignment by Emir Var Emreis to lead one of many groups that would travel to Sintra during the invasion of Sintra in order to kidnap a specific individual, this individual being Ciri. Before the invasion, the Nilfgaardians learned from a Nilfgaardian spy posing as a chamberlain in Sintra that just as the Nilfgaardians were about to conquer the city, she would be smuggled out. So many groups were formed to increase the likelihood of finding her. One of these groups was led by Kahir. Anyway, the invasion happened, Ciri, along with the Sintran escort, tried to escape and ran into Kahir's group by complete chance or perhaps destiny. Kahir's group and the Sintran escort all dealt with each other, leaving only Kahir and Ciri. Kahir went to retrieve Ciri, with his horse forcing him to dismount as, let's just say, the environment at the time was pretty awful. There were the bodies of the dead everywhere, buildings crumbling, and everything was on fire. After getting to Ciri, he pulled her up onto his horse while she screamed and then suddenly went stiff out of shock. Then he somehow escaped from that hell and rode away. He found himself at a river with Ciri, however it was the same river the Sintrans were fleeing to, so he discarded his charred, winged, Nilfgaardian officer's helmet and travelled with them. He didn't discard his armour though, as it was so filthy and scorched, there was no way he would be recognised as a Nilfgaardian. Luckily Ciri did not regain consciousness in this time, and so he was not discovered. Eventually he slipped away with Ciri, and ended up by another river where he washed her as she was covered in dirt and blood. It's noted she still and tensed from his touch, and he tried to calm her but couldn't find the words, so he just tried to calm her through contact, but she ended up whimpering. Sometime after, both then fell asleep from exhaustion, and when Kahir awoke, she had fled. From here, Kahir went into a sort of madness, and when he was eventually found by his fellow Nilfgaardians pacing around in circles and crying like a wolf, he was then questioned by the men of Vatia Derido about her whereabouts, and when he couldn't answer, he was pretty much interrogated. He then spent the next year locked up in a cell in the Citadel, crying like when he was found.
After almost a year of being locked up in the Citadel, Cahir was called upon by Amir Var Emres. Amir wanted to give him a second chance. Now, normally patience is not a virtue the Emperor is known to have, and giving second chances to those that have failed him in the past is even less likely. But in the case of Cahir, in a similar way to Geralt and the Witcher 3, Amir needed him. For you see, Cahir was the only one of his vast empire-wide network of subordinates that knew what Ciri actually looked like. He also possessed the useful skill of speaking the common tongue, so he was given another chance to retrieve Ciri for him, and this chance would take place on the Isle of Thanid. This next event is a fairly long and complex one, so for today's entry, I will just be discussing Kahir's involvement with a little bit of context. Kahir was sent along with Reintz, the subordinate of a northern sorcerer, Vilgefortz, and multiple Scoia'tael commandos led by Isengrim Faelatiana to the Isle of Thanid, with the chief goal being to retrieve Ciri. Long story short, Ciri was with Yennefer, as well as a bunch of other mages in the Palace of Garstang. A lot of political conversation was going on in regards to Vilgefortz conspiring with Nilfgaard, and Philippa trying to incite a war between the North and Nilfgaard, and Ciri was unintentionally using her prophetic power to reveal certain pieces of information to them, for example that King Vizimir of Redania, Radovid V's father, had been killed the night before. There was a standoff, Tissaia removed the magical protections of Garstang, and Francesca Finderbear opened the basement door of the palace, revealing commandos of Scoia'tael units along with a scarred man, Reintz, and they were all being led by a Nilfgaardian in a winged helmet, Kahir. From Kahir's point of view at this point in the story, he actually saw Ciri, but then spells started going off, causing various explosions, and also causing him to lose all sense of direction. And because of these explosions, it left Ciri's body buried under the body of a Scoia'tael unit. She was then rescued by Yennefer, who ordered her to run. Let's just say Ciri managed to escape Garstang, and Kahir heard from a Scoia'tael soldier that she had been seen trying to escape to Aratusa. The Scoia'tael luckily found a saddled horse in the nearby stable, and from here, Kahir pursued her. Ciri ran, but of course Kahir caught up to her, and this was at the steps of Torlara, and after a brief exchange of words, he attempted to reach out to her. This played on her childhood nightmares, causing a blind rage to ensue and an adept focus to take hold of her, leading to her drill-like care more and training to kick in. Before I discuss this brief fight, I want to add some slight information in regards to Kahir from the perception of Ciri. As I explained earlier, during the invasion of Sintra, Kahir had pursued Ciri, rescued and or caught her, and eventually washed her. She had then escaped whilst he slept. Well, from Ciri's point of view, she didn't even view him as human, more like a nightmarish figure of her dreams. When she thought back to those events, she thought of a black knight with an almost devil-like winged helmet trying to inflict pain on her and take her from her home. She had nightmares about his touch when he washed her, and basically he was like the childhood monster under her bed, which is understandable considering he was such a key figure in one of the most distressing times of her life, fleeing home in the midst of a hellish environment, losing everyone she loved, of course except Geralt, and being alone, except for a knight embodying the figure of the thing that had taken all of this from her. I mean, you gotta consider that Ciri was also quite young during these events, so you can definitely see why he would have manifested in this way just in her own head. Anyway, back to Thanid, she entered this blind rage and using the sword she had got from Geralt during her escape, Geralt had also helped like Yennefer but stayed behind to slow down potential pursuers, she attacked Kahir. She defeated him easily and caused a nasty wound to his hand, and just before delivering the killing blow, she caught sight of his face, which as described by her, was just a young man with blue eyes and dark hair, lying scared in a pool of his own blood. She decided to spare him, and then saw a group of Scoia'tael heading her way from Garstang, so she fled. The Scoia'tael then reached Kahir, and instead of pursuing Ciri, tried to help him up. He told them to stop and go after her, but before he could even finish his sentence, the Scoia'tael were already being torn to pieces by a very angry Witcher. Geralt was described as a white monster, even more so than Ciri had been when attacking Kahir, and with an unnerving effectiveness, massacred the entire Scoia'tael unit. When Geralt finally got to the wounded Kahir, Kahir simply whimpered, don't kill me. Geralt told him he knew who he was, and he knew he had been the one pursuing Ciri for a long time. Geralt also asked for one reason quickly, why he shouldn't kill him. Kahir told him that he was the one who had saved Ciri's life. He was the one who had saved her from the fires in Sintra. After this, Kahir closed his eyes, and when he opened them again, the Witcher was gone. He then fainted. 
The fighting was still going on when Kahir was found at the steps of Tor Lara, unconscious, by the elf Isengrim Faelitiana. The lower levels of Thanid Isle were now occupied by the King's men, and if they discovered a Nilfgaardian, it would show Nilfgaard's direct involvement in the events at Thanid. So Isengrim retrieved him, went back to the basement of Garstang, through the caverns they had entered, and boarded a ship with the remaining 12 Scoia'tael soldiers. After escaping, the elf, as well as Kahir and the Scoia'tael, lay low in some woods west of Hirundum. Isengrim told us that Kahir tore at his bandages, raving about a girl known as Ciri with large green eyes, who was also the lion cub of Sintra. He talked about a witcher who had massacred his group, and also a sorcerer who flew towards the Tower of the Gull like a bird. He then demanded a horse so he could return to the Isle, and try to order the Scoia'tael back to the Isle, as he said it was the Emperor's wishes. Isengrim considered the situation and deem what Kahir was saying as the ravings of a madman. He opted to instead put together a new squad and resume his fighting against the accursed Dwan. Assumedly after some travelling, Kahir along with Isengrim and the Elven Commando reached a drop-off point with a contact box, giving further orders to Isengrim. These orders stated that Kahir was now considered a traitor to the Empire, and although Isengrim thought differently, he didn't deem it his place to meddle in affairs he didn't consider his own. So Kahir was tied up with no resistance on his part, and placed in a wooden coffin. He was then given to one of Isengrim's Hav Karen, or Hawker, and ordered to be taken to the requested drop-off point by Isengrim. A Hawker is effectively a Scoia'tael merchant that sells items looted from the dead they deem unnecessary. They then sell these items to buy weapons or useful supplies. They have quite a bad reputation from a human's point of view. As fate would have it, after Geralt's similar escape from Thanid, and his preceding month-long and then some recovery, Geralt happened to be on his way from the Dryad's home of Broccolon, with his good friend Dandelion, when in the midst of a storm, he happened upon two elven hawkers, patiently waiting for a contact at a drop-off point. And this Witches is where the relationship between Kahir and Geralt truly begins. However, I'll save that, as well as some other information on his family and his motivations, for a later lore entry. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are appreciated, of course, as well as the Patreon pledges.